tried to record our first episode. It things didn't go the way that they were supposed to. I was cute, y'all. Like, I'm gonna insert some clips. I had on my makeup, baby. I was bad. But sometimes you let the devil and emotions and flesh get away, get in the way of your purpose of what you're supposed to be doing. Cause he'll come and try to attack it any way possible. But if you let him in just an inch, he gonna come in all the way. So yesterday that was a, a test of that, y'all. It was a whole lot, a whole lot of I'm not gonna explain what happened, but just know we did let the devil get in. And when he got in that motherfucker, he sat down. Do you hear me? So yeah. We're about to start this podcast. I pray that everybody's having an amazing week so far. It is Tuesday. Um, I just pray that y'all are feeling y'all best. Y'all are doing y'all best. I pray prosperity over y'all life. I pray greatness and grace over y'all life. Yes, and I know that y'all going to have an amazing day. So just stay tuned for what's about to come, y'all. What's up, my beautiful flowers? It's your girl, I am Rolandria, also known as Ron, because as you know, we blossom and we're rose. Period. And it is crazy for Coco. <laughs> and today we will be bringing you our new series called Vibrating Higher. Period. So, um, as I just said, my name is Blossoming. Um, as you know, if you are subscribed to my channel, if you're not hey, girl, hey. And hey boy, hey, um, over there in my channel, we are flowers. We're just blossoming into the people that God created us to be. So this series, oh, you go, what's your, what's your, what do you call your people? Um, like I said, my name is um, Crazy for Coco. And over at my channel, we are gems. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's we gems. You know what that means. <laughs> so yeah, we collabed on this series just so that, um, we can vibrate higher. Being that y'all flowers, you have to have the higher vibration to grow, to blossom, to bloom. And gems. Okay. So for, for a gem, that means that you are pure. That means that um, through roughness, you've grown into something beautiful. So even though it's two different words, you got flowers, you got gems, all of it stems from growing into something so much more beautiful than where you started from. In this, um, it's going to be a safe space. We're going to have it where y'all can send us questions. I'm going to put both of our social medias right here. Y'all can inbox us. Y'all can DM us if you want to keep it anonymous. You can. You can send us topics to talk about. Anything that you want to hear from us, just let us know. But, of course, if y'all know me, you know we got to have a drink. And she got me drinking too. <laughs> so, cheers to y'all. Just to grow. Period. It is good. Mm -hmm. okay. It tastes really good. I can say that more. <laughs> one time, but one time. But yeah, y'all, this series is going to be something great. We're going to have guests. Um, Y'all go over there and subscribe to Crazy for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> okay. So, we can get into our first topic. Okay. Um, we were originally supposed to be talking about a whole different thing, but uh, we had surprised um, me first of all. <laughs> yeah, she don't know this topic, so it's gonna catch her off guard. Uh, however, we were having a conversation earlier, and we were talking about you know it's 2022. One of the biggest things is I match energy. So, are you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, y'all. It just caught me off guard. Okay. So, that's the thing on social media. I'm, I'm going to match somebody's energy. Whatever you give me, I'm going to give it back to you tempo. So, my question is, is it okay to match energy? And we can go with you. Okay. <clears throat> I say that it's okay because... Just a little background on me coming from a place where I did match energy. No matter how nobody treated me, I still treated them as to how I wanted to be treated. And I end up hurting the end. And they were okay because they was doing what they wanted to do the whole time. But I didn't match their energy. So it was like, row, I mean, blossoming was left high and dry. 
And it's like, you go on on doing what you want to do. And I'm hurt because I've been this pure, genuine person to you throughout this whole time. But you showed me who you were multiple times, but I continue to be who I am. So now I'm in a season where I match your energies. You give that to me, I'm going to give it back to you. Because why do you deserve this from me and I, you're, I'm not getting it from you? Okay. What do you think? <laughs> my perspective on this, and I'm the person that always gives an analogy. Um... There's a thing as a thermostat, and then there's a thermometer. A thermometer, you can change the temperature of the thermometer. So you put a thermometer in your mouth, and you have the ability to change that, that temperature. However, I don't care how much you touch a thermostat, no one can change the temperature of the thermostat. The, temp the thermostat changes the temperature of the room, right? Mm. So in any room that I go in, I now want to be a thermostat. I've definitely been a thermometer where somebody could affect my energy. So here's what I would say. I'm a thermostat. So I'm going to be me regardless. So if I'm a positive, upbeat person, um, or if I give love to everyone I meet and that love is in return, I'm not going to match your energy. I'm going to protect my energy. And you have to roll. So can you explain the a difference between you protecting your energy and matching energy? Um, I feel like matching energy looks like if somebody's being mean and negative toward you, you're going to give mean and negative back. I feel like protecting energy means I'm going to give you good. I'm going to give you positive. You may still give me negative and give me mean. I'm not going to give that back to you. What I'm going to say is this person does not deserve to be in my space. Mm, okay. So I would say protect energy in 2022 instead of match energy. <laughs> <laughs> y'all so i would say in the comments right here drop what you what you would do are you gonna protect your energy or are you gonna match the energy in 2022 we want to know we're gonna match that <laughs> <laughs> i do get what she's saying though i definitely do get that but <laughs> it's like um what if you're not ready to cut that person out let me just play what if you're not ready to cut that person out what if you want to match their energy well it is really a waste of time but what if you want to match their energy to see so i'm on a self-love journey right mm -hmm. and i feel like matching someone else's energy is not giving myself love that means if they're being negative to me or they're causing any type of discomfort to me if we can't and i'm not just saying if somebody causes discomfort to you then just cut them off automatically that's not how that works but if you're causing discomfort to me, my goal is to communicate my feelings, tell you exactly how I feel, and if you deem it necessary to make adjustments, you will. However, if a person does not make adjustments, I'm not matching energy. We're on a self-love journey. We can't afford to say, well, I'm going to keep you around even if you treat me bad. We got to say, uh-uh. We got a destination to go to, mm -hmm. and... I love myself enough to know that if you are not in alignment with where I'm going, unfortunately, how you say it, you're just not a part of this chapter. Mm -hmm. Maybe you will come up in a later chapter, but right now, you're just not a part of this chapter. Okay. okay. So, y'all, as y'all see, we be... We're going to tussle a little bit because we got to come to a mutual ground. Like, I learned from her. She learns from me. I do have a question for you though. Mm -hmm. So, what does self love look like to you? Um, I am working on self love. I feel like it's something that you're always working toward. Um, self love to me looks like being selfish with yourself, putting yourself first. It is okay to be selfish with yourself. It's not just the manies and petties the bubble baths and the wine that's great and all but self-love to me means healing childhood traumas it means doing the shadow work so if you know that something affects your emotions then let's journal about it or whatever steps that you take to unpack those emotions uh, it means looking in the mirror and whatever flaws that i feel are flaws to me then falling in love with those flaws on the way to the person that I'm becoming. Okay. And what does it look like for you? 
Well, self love to me is um, it's like kind of personal for me because I I haven't always had self love so to say. Um, I mistreated myself like all my life, and it hasn't been until my twenty twos. I'm gonna be twenty three, y'all. And so I turned 22, so I was like, oh, no, bro, you the shit. Like, look at yourself. In the, for, for me, this is what I do. I look at myself in the mirror, think about all the stuff that I've been through and say, you are so strong. You are beautiful. You did that. What you been through, people weren't going to be able to make it through. I write stuff down. I just try to unpack myself. Like, just get deeper within the layers. My prayer, um, I don't know when the video, do you remember when the video was? Did it say a date yesterday? I did not see the date. I don't know. We'll put the date, but it was like last year, and I, my only prayer was, Lord, teach me how to love me better. That was my only prayer because when you don't love yourself, you'll let so much stuff slide. And now that I'm in the process of loving and learning and growing, it's like stuff that I thought was okay. Girl, it ain't okay. You worth so much more than it. Yeah, they your mama, they your dad, they your sister, they your cousin, but they're still human. They're still a person. So if you don't love yourself, you could put yourself last like I did <laughs> all the time. You know, so self-love to me is like just standing up for what I believe in, do what I want to do, um, healing childhood traumas, and just trying to be a healthier person mentally overall. Um, And I saw... Uh, Blossoming's video yesterday and it was amazing to see a person who was in a broken space in life and you could see the brokenness but to then see the person and the woman that I am now sitting next to it was amazing to even watch her express those feelings of and that prayer and a year ago she was not this person so to see that that meant if she was different than this person here, she had to be putting in the work. And I'm sure, because I know for sure, on the self-love journey, putting in the work is not easy at all. It's going to be ups. And when you think you up and you think you're good, you're going to go down. And you're going to like, wait a minute, I thought I conquered this part. And you got to start it over. And it's a, it's a journey. It's a process. But I do want to say, in seeing that video of you yesterday, it was amazing to see your growth. And I just want to take the time to say, don't make me cry. <laughs> I just want to take the time to say, I am super proud of your growth. And from the person I saw then to the woman that I see that you are now, and then you're not even scratching the surface of who you are becoming. That's Thank amazing. You. I received you. That's amazing. Thank you. Very welcome, love. It's so hard, though, y'all. Like, um, the thing that was the hardest for me during this process and still is the hardest, kind of, I'm better with it now, is looking at myself in the mirror. Not looking, oh, at yourself, like looking at, oh, look at my eyebrows. No, staring you at, in the eyes and looking deep within, that it was like the hardest thing for me. Um, can't believe I'm going to share this, but like I was telling her yesterday, like, I used to walk past the mirror and didn't want to look at myself. Like, who was that girl? I would take pictures. I knew I was fine. Oh, girl, you fine as the mother. But when it came to really just seeing me, I didn't want to do that. I was scared of that person because I didn't know her. I didn't know who she was. So why am I looking at a person that I don't know or not ready to explore yet? Because I knew once I explored myself and learned me on a deeper level, a lot of stuff that I thought was okay was going to get cut out. A lot of relationship was going to end. So, growth is scary, but it's worth it because looking back at who I was, I thank God every day that he allowed me to grow from that person, that broken place. The place that I thought I wasn't going to get out of. Right. But I, he grew me from that. I want you to look at the camera and I want you to try something. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to yourself nice for the people. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm full of myself. So. <laughs> what does it look like? to practice self-love because we're telling people self-love this self-love that and one thing that you said yesterday was no one taught me what it meant to practice self-love and to love myself right so we want to give them an example of what 
self love looks like, just in the in the form of affirmations. Okay, guys. Let me get together. Okay. So, Rolandria, no matter what you've been through, you are worth it. You are seen. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are significant. No matter what you go through, everything in your life is for a purpose. You haven't reached that chapter yet of your purpose, but you're already walking in it, whether you know it or not. No matter what you don't like about yourself, you that bitch. Excuse my language, but you that bitch. You are not a mistake. You are not a product of your past. You are not your trauma. You are not your trauma. You are not your trauma, Rolanda. Yes, yes, yes. It was not your fault. You're going to be something great. You are already great. You're going to change lives. You already are changing lives. You are purposefully made. God put a special assignment on your life. So what you go through is not for you, but it's for you to bless others. I need to stop because I'm going to cry. Well, yeah, that's how I do it. Good job. That was amazing. I know that took a lot. That, that definitely took a lot to in front of the world to be able to speak nicely to yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of women and men, we go through the day and we don't speak nicely. The world is already beating us up. Right. And we are our worst critics. Um, so what I want you guys to do is when you look in the mirror, I want you to be grateful and I want you to speak in the now. So meaning you want to practice gratitude in all that you do. So how this look looks is I am so thankful and grateful now that I, right? So I'm going to talk to myself nice. Chanel, I am so thankful and grateful now that you love yourself. I am so thankful and grateful now that I am abundant. I am so thankful and grateful now that I am a light in the world. I am so thankful and grateful now that my gifts make room for me. I am so thankful and grateful for the woman that I am becoming. I am so thankful and grateful that I am a winner. I am a champion. I am so thankful and grateful that I am happy. I am humble. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am strong. I am so thankful and grateful that money comes to me easily. Joy comes to me easily. Love comes to me easily. Abundance comes to me easily. Easily Connections comes to me easily. Chanel, I love your kinky curls. Chanel, I love your rose, baby. You look good. You look good. When you walk into the world, guess what? People listen to you. You are a boss. When you talk, people listen. You are greatness in the flesh. If people want to know what a blessing looks like, they can look at you. And that is me talking to myself nicely. I feel like that um, women, not, I know I keep saying women, but y'all know how I feel. But people should just do that every day. Because when you don't love yourself, you don't love others. You know, like, that's one thing that I have to learn. I can't receive love if I don't love myself. I can't give out love. If I don't truly, fully love bro, blossoming. And it's like, um, sometimes you think that you reach the level, oh, I love myself. Oh, I, I love myself. I don't care what nobody say. Like, everybody used to always tell me, bro, take time for yourself. Like, y'all been on this journey with me with relationships. Every time I would get out of a relationship, my mom, my friends, take time for yourself. Love on you. Love on you. How do I do that? Y'all constantly telling me to love on me, but you're not giving me the formula to do so. So it's like I was in a place where I had to figure it out. I had to say, bro, what that mean? What does loving you look like to you? What does love look like to you? Um, and the definition of love was very different for me. Um, so I feel like that, um, you know, how you are raised, it, it shows up in your adulthood and love for some people may not be what love is for you so i want to ask you coco what is love to you um love is an action word um one philosophy that i live by is faith without work is dead right so all day long i can tell myself hey i love you i love myself right but i have to put the action behind it so mm -hmm. that's what love is unconditional like the agape style love so we're talking about self-love again you just said it before i can give love to the world 
I have to be able to love myself agape style, unconditional. I mean, I don't care how I look. If I take these lashes off, if I take these eyebrows off, <laughs> I ain't got no makeup on, but if I take all of the other stuff off, am I going to love myself unconditionally? People change every 90 days, right? Mm -hmm. Every 90 days you're becoming a new person. Things have happened in life and you're constantly changing. Whether it's for the good or the bad, we're constantly changing. So that means that you have to continuously learn to love yourself and, and probably redefine what love means to you because it's not going to always mean the same. the same thing. It's based on who you are in life. As a child, love probably meant give me some money, give me some candy, right. and we good. As an adult, <laughs> for somebody who's loving me, there's a level of responsibility that it comes with you loving me and me loving you. So, yeah. love is an action word. Definitely. I definitely agree with that. Um, I definitely can say now that I, I'm in the pro well, I love myself and I'm continuing to learn to love me even more. What I thought was love isn't love. What did you think love was? Ooh, child. <laughs> That's what child. I thought. I was about to say, woo, child. Um, okay. So for me, that's what was love for you in the past versus what you define love as now. And now I'm going to turn around and answer that question because I wasn't always this on a healing journey person. I was something oh, woo, different. That <laughs> <laughs> that's how I was. You can get it. Um, okay, so for me, I'm a server, and I talk about this all the time. I like to serve, serve, serve. So for me, love for me was being, was my partner being satisfied in my service. Hmm. Dang, I'm just saying it out loud. Well, <laughs> that how was, does that feel saying it out loud? Let's take a moment for that. Wow. That Say it again. Love for me was my partner being satisfied in my service. So, um, but I didn't ever think about what the what what does love look like for you? How do you want to be loved? I never thought about that because I've always been a person that I, I placed myself on the back burner because I was raised to put people before you. Like, this is what you do with serve. My mom is a server. My dad is a pastor. He serves. So, that's what I was raised to serve. So, that's what I adapted to. That's what I took on to. And that's what I was comfortable in. And let, I'm here to tell you, God cannot bless you in a comfortable space. You have to be uncomfortable to grow. You have to be uncomfortable to know that what I'm doing is just the surface. So love for me was service. Love for me now, and I talk about it all the time, my five love languages um, is words of affirmation. <laughs> Um, what else? What was my second one? What's my second one? Quality time. Quality time. I love a good quality time. <laughs> I love a good quality time. Acts of service, physical touch, and gift giving. And I think I need to work on having gift giving as the last one because I'm a gift giver. Mm -hmm. So that's the way you show love. Right. You don't expect that in return. Right. But do I want it in return? Do you? I don't know. Because I say, my, with my mouth, I say I don't. But in my mind, I'm like, dang, I wish somebody would give me flowers. So you do. So that right. means what you should do is probably, in your journal, now you got to uncover why don't you require that. So now, you write in your journal, okay. I would like for gift giving to be one of my uh, love languages. Why have I never required for people to give me gifts? Because I serve people. And I want you guys to understand, serving people is not, first of all, <laughs> first of all, this is sage. This is a self-love sage. And so we are talking about self-love and I just felt it on my spirit to, it went out, but to light this and we're gonna save this environment for some self-love for us and for you. However, I want you guys to understand that service to people is not bad. 
Right. So the fact that you love to serve right. is not bad. In fact, service to many leads to greatness. That's right. one of the philosophies I live by. But you also have to be selfish with yourself. So now you got to look at, okay, what's my love language? You know your love languages, but you want to be able to tell people, hey, I like gifts too. The, the love that I give to you, I want to receive it as well. So I'm, by, by what you're doing, you're teaching people how to love you. It's just going to take the right person to catch on to, hey, she give me gifts all the time. Let me give her a gift back. Right. And for me, for me, it doesn't have to be something that you brought from the store. Like, honestly, the best gift for me is you putting thought into it. Like, I, I can look at that gift and see me all over it. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the best gift for me. Like, write me a letter. I love a good letter. Uh, that's like, not gift giving. That is word you a, affirmation. You put a bow on it. <laughs> you put a bow on it and give it to me. To me, that's a gift. Put okay. it in some flowers. Okay. That's a gift for me. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And me and her, we had this discussion on where um, I said, I don't, I'm not in the business of teaching people how to love me. So... Huh. But I, I made you see what I was saying though. Okay. Explain it to the people of why don't you feel okay, I, I get it. Uh because the right person you won't have to teach how to love. Exactly. You. Like you right. I feel like that my person, first of all, y'all not get back in a relationship until I'm 25, I'm 22, just let y'all know. But when I do get back in a relationship, uh uh-uh. uh. Is that the hurt talking? No, that's the real me. That's the real. Yeah, I need a couple years to focus on me, y'all. Good, as you should. Cause as I, you should. Because I've been back. Not because of past hurt, but because of right now, you got a lot of purpose. You got a lot of things on your life that, hey, a relationship may be a distraction. So right now, uh, wife, you over there doing your own thing. You go, you go become an alignment with who you're supposed to be. I'm going to become in alignment with who I'm supposed to be. And when we get in alignment, we're going to come together. But right now, at 22 and 23, it is not the time for us to... This is self love. <laughs> it's not the time for us to be right here. Go, go, go. Right. Go attract your level of alignment. I get what you're saying. Exactly. I don't have time. But I feel like um, I shouldn't have to teach anybody how to love me. I, I did that. I repeatedly over and over like gave them up, gave somebody up. I could, I gave somebody the blueprint, literally the blueprint on how I want to be loved or, you know, how I expect to be loved, and it didn't work. So I'm in the business now. You just gonna have to pay attention to me. I shouldn't have to tell you my favorite color. You come to my humble bowl, you see it's pink and red. That's my or rose gold. That's my favorite color. I shouldn't have to tell. Everything that you learn about me, we can talk about it. But at the end of the day, you should learn it. I want to talk about it when you see it. Like I've been, I've been observing you. Is your favorite color rose gold? Because this that is a lot of rose gold around this joint. Thank you. That's what I feel like it should be. And that's I'm not wrong. saying that I, I'm not open and willing to teach some, like to tell, like, of course, you don't know me. I don't know you. We come from two different walks of life. I can't expect you to automatically learn, know how to love me. I'm very, very patient. You know that. I'm very patient understanding. But I'm not in the business of repeatedly telling somebody what and what not. I'm not, first of all, I'm not growing nobody up. I'm not your mom. I'm not your mom. You have to come to me whole. Because I've experienced when I, I left and came to somebody whole, and because they wasn't whole, I poured it all out and it was I had nothing that left to give. So you gotta come to me whole and heal. If you talk about your ex too much, you're in love, well, I don't want you. And it's just like my standard now because I'm tired of baby now. I think <laughs> you know what that now means. <laughs> right. Now I am in a relationship, right? Am I completely whole? You've been knowing me for a, for a good minute. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think I'm completely whole. So, but that, you know how to... You are a very strong person. Your wholeness, your unwholeness does affect it, your relationship sometimes. But for the most part, you can control it. 
this is why I'm okay with, because people are always becoming. You're always becoming the next version of yourself. Right. So, I am not completely whole yet. I'm sure there are some childhood traumas and some adult traumas that my mate has not healed from, right? Which then makes her unwhole. But the reason that I'm continuing to be in a relationship, even though she's not completely whole, I'm not completely whole, because individually we're working toward right. becoming But you have whole. to want to change. When I say whole, well then. I was about to say, y'all, she don't <laughs> never drink her drinks this fast. We were have to do it in a mission in a minute. It was good. <laughs> but um I definitely say that because you have to want to change. You have to want to work towards being a hoe. You have to want to love yourself and grow. So for me, I'm not in the business of taking on somebody that doesn't want to. So yeah. you're willing to. Well, not right now because yeah, not right you got now. a couple of years before you can be in a relationship. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Hello. You better tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but... You're saying that at 25 or whatever age that you get to when you decide that, hey, I'm ready for a relationship. As long as that person has the burning desire to grow, then I'm willing to grow with them. Mm -hmm. So for like my relationship, a thing that's helping is I've always wanted to go to therapy, but I never made that decision until being in a relationship and I realized, hey, there are some childhood issues there are some attachment styles that I have that causes me to be a certain way in my relationship. It causes me to sometimes be polite. I don't want that in my relationship. So it's not, I'm not going to therapy for the relationship. I'm going to therapy to heal the childhood traumas, heal some different things. And just as a byproduct of me healing the relationship would grow. Right. So that's what you're kind of saying. Like, right. later on in life, if you're you don't willing have to, to grow, then... Right. You don't have to come to me perfect. Just come to me willing. Like, that's... Literally, y'all, that's all I used to say. Like, I, I'm i the type of person... I love to make mistakes because I learn from my mistakes. And I know that, oh, you make this mistake, bro. You learn from that stuff. You're not going to do... Even if I do the same mistake again, I'm not going to do it in the way that I did the last time. I'm going to make progress. With the mistake, if it didn't make sense. It does. So, I'm just the person. I don't care about you making mistakes. Let's make mistakes together. We're going to grow and learn from this. But the thing is, you have to be willing to learn. You have to, you have to want to grow. You have to want to heal. And I've experienced where people don't want to heal. They want to hold on to their hurt because it's comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. So, like I will always say, <laughs> like I will always say, you can't grow from a comfortable space. And I had to learn that. Like, I'm mad at this, that, and the other. Okay, it's not affecting them. So that's what I will try to like imply mm -hmm. with my past relationships. You're comfortable with the pain, so you hold on to it because it's your safety. Because it feels, it feels safe. Right, and you're used to, you're used to how it feels. Yeah. So you don't want to get out of that comfortable space because you know once you tap into that pain, you're gonna be uncomfortable. And when you're uncomfortable, you grow, but you don't, you can't take the process of growing, so you're going to hold on to that pain. You're going to hold on to the victimized mind. Man, man, man. I'm going to give a situation. I'm, I'm, I'm a person that's, typically I'm not. <laughs> you're not <laughs> with my emotions. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm She's definitely. A, I am definitely an on the surface person. Uh, when it comes to my own emotions. Now, with other people's emotions, maybe express them all day long. I'm going I'm, to I'm help you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, one, th I am on the journey of becoming. I always like to say that. So, I don't want you guys to look at us as perfect. We are not. We are flawed individuals who will one day reach our level of perfection, not society's level of perfection. Period. We under the instruction. I mean, under... What is it called? Under construction. <laughs> she said, we under instruction, baby. We, we under, under construction. construction. Period. Okay, so while I've been under instruction, <laughs> while I've been under construction, I have been um, dealing with different traumas of mine. 
and it has been really hard to step out of your comfort zone. In fact, this entire week, and the week just really started, but even for last week, I have been extremely emotional. Like, in my feelings, and I'm like, whoa. I'm, I'm, I didn't text my therapist this morning like, hey, my anxiety is high. Help me counting to 10 is not working. I don't know why my anxiety high, but it is. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels uncomfortable to go through that process of tapping into, a, into the unknown and to saying, okay, are you the reason for your own anxiety be, being high? Are you the reason for your overthinking? The normal me would say, you know what? We're going to put those feelings. It's getting hot in here. What's up, guys? We're just coming back to close the video out. We want to tell y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. If y'all love that, y'all going to be mind blown about what's to come. It's my go. Okay. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all enjoyed the conversation and love the realness and uncut version of us we can't wait to give you more of what you've been missing why is she talking like this a sex advertisement <laughs> <laughs> but we love y'all thank y'all for tuning in <laughs> make sure you go subscribe for crazy to coco and blossom Monroe because you know we come with that heat with that drip with that sauce we finna grow together glow together and get this much money Thank you. And the first episode of Vibrating Higher is a fucking wrap. Bad bitch energy. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Love and hair grease. Here you go. <laughs>